Hello, everybody, and welcome to another hobby cheating video. And today we are going to do some serious speed painting. So I talk a lot in my videos about zenithal highlighting and using that in undershading. So what I want to do here is I want to sort of really hone in on this. I've kind of talked about it in previous videos. I'm going to show you the process of zenithal highlighting and your next glaze and how you can paint most of a miniature, especially a uniform miniature, in about three minutes, okay? And have it look really good and capture all your shading. This is great for your things like Stormcast, like Space Marines. Things where they have lots of surfaces, like this guy. I don't know what this is. I just, I wanted, I found a big armored dude that I, I needed to use. So you can see he's got big armor plates and stuff like that. He's some kind of knockoff armored warrior dude. So, sure, why not? Uh, let's do it. So, what is he right now? Right now, all I did is just prime him all over with my standard Vallejo uh german panzer gray which is my primer of choice and always will be now very quickly we're going to zenithal this i'm going to show you what that means and then we're going to paint him and you're going to see the wonderful effect you get now very quickly i want to talk about something in between this step of black and then putting on your gray and white, which is how you do your zenithal with your airbrush. Okay, in this case, I prefer cold gray and just straight white. Um, you have to think about what is the final color going to be. Is that final color going to work okay with black? If your final color is pink or red in any way, you need to then recoat this. If you're going to do a pink model, pink horror or something like that, a fleshy person... You want to probably turn this maybe purple or brown, depending on where you want to go. Red, you want to cover this brown. So I would do just another all-over coat to undershade that color appropriately. Because the problem is black doesn't work really well as an undercolor underneath. Red, orange, yellow, pink. And that's probably it. If, it's, if you're going blue, purple, green, uh, or something, anything like that, uh, you're probably good to stick to black so okay that being said and by the way when i say all over i mean like if i wanted to turn this dude red i would just literally grab a dark brown color like a dark black brown and i would just spray them all over let it dry and then do what i'm about to do so what are we going to do all right i'm going to take a little bit of my cold gray now as i said i'm using game air cold gray you can use whatever you want any kind of you want a fairly mid-tone gray you don't want to go too light because you you don't want to overdo this you want it to be different than your white um, but you don't want it to be like black gray you want it mid-tone gray you know why because you want it in between the black and the white makes sense right all right so make sure we got some good flow now how do we zenithal okay so here i've got the miniature and what i'm going to do in fact i'm going to leave him here because I don't actually need to pick him up that much. At this angle, right here, so let me make sure you can see. This is the miniature, a 45 degree angle. This is straight on, you know, this is up to his head. I'm gonna come in like that, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in there and we're just gonna give him a nice high angle coat, okay? I'm just kind of doing this all over and you see what happens is the raised areas catch more right okay if you see that there's an area not getting quite hit as much as you want you can focus in on that a little so for example if i want to make sure that the shoulder pads and the top of his head, as you often have on, like, Marine or, or Sigmar-type characters, or uh, Stormcast-type characters. I can just focus in a little bit there and do that. Maybe get these little pieces. There you go. Done. Done and done. Get rid of that gray. Blow it out. We just quickly... You know, I saw some people commenting on a couple videos about how it's really hard for them to clean their airbrush. You're using, your paint is too thick. That's my answer. It takes me 30 seconds to clean my airbrush because I use thin paint. 
um, I would say you're not thinning your paint enough. Just keep around some cleaner. I put a drop of cleaner. I keep this, just like a hot dog ketchup bottle of water. That's just water. And I put a quick drop of cleaner in the bottom, fill the rest up with water, swish it around, backfill it. Backfilling, by the way, is this, just in case there's any question. Blow it out, done. I mean, seriously, it's 30 seconds to change paint. 45 if you want to get really thorough, right? Like, your paint isn't even fully dry if you really want to by the time you're switching between colors. Now, every, like, four or five colors, if you're really cycling through, sure, you want to take a little more time, give it a little more thorough cleaning, but still. Okay, so now what's our next step? To complete zenithal highlighting, okay? Uh, zenithal highlighting is simply this. It is going from white at a high angle to black at a low angle. And it creates a system of undershading to set up for our later colors. It's useful because it helps show us where our highlights are. We can also use it with glazes to cheat, which is obviously what we're going to do right now. So, now I've got just straight white down in the pot, okay? Now this I am going to pick up the miniature because it will be easier. Now from this angle, dead on, 90 degrees above, I'm going to come in and I'm going to just lightly do this. I'm just moving back and forth across the miniature very quickly. Just building up that white. Okay. And I'm going to kind of cycle it around. I might swing down to like, let's say, uh, you know, I might swing down to like 80 degrees, 75 degrees. Then I'm just building it up, not putting out a lot of paint. nice and slow so now what has happened when you look at him like that he looks pretty white like if i hold him up that's a pretty white miniature but look at him like that you see all those shadows still there look at how much black still is in the under area of that armor well look under his arm right that's what we want we want that transition right those natural changes in shade now, same rules apply. If you don't have an area, if you want to make sure an area is really popped, maybe we'll come in here, we'll really hit... Oops, I did a little too much. That happens. There we go, we can fix that. Hit those shoulder pads a little. There we go. Okay. Maybe the end of the fist, edge of that top of the fingers angles matter here you know like if you need to get the top of the fingers i'm pointing across the fingertips that way i only catch the edges angles matter think about your angles and what you're going to hit when you put the paint out at that angle okay all right so there we go zenithal done and done if any if you ever hear me say zenithal highlighting that's all there is to it. It is a very simple, easy process. And now we're going to paint this actual guy, whatever this thing is. And uh, I'm going to show you how you can basically paint the whole miniature now in two more steps. As I said, this really works the best with these sort of like, I guess, uni, unimaterial uh, characters. Because you're doing very little brushwork afterward. You know, usually like if you take a Space Marine... A space marine is mostly armor, you know. Beyond armor, he's like maybe a gun and a shoulder pad and some eyeballs, <laughs> right? Like that's not eyeball eyeballs, but whatever their their face mask eyes are, right? Okay, so now all this is set in. We've got our zenithal done. And you can see when I lay him down, nice and dark, up to very bright. Okay, now comes the magic. All we're going to do... Okay, is I'm going to take some ultramarine blue in this case, seemed the most appropriate. Um, but you could use anything, like I said, purple, greens, and stuff. You're doing uh, dark angels are awesome with this, things like in a dark angel scheme. You want to avoid paint that has lots of white in it. Okay, white reflects light. Hence, the more white that is in a paint, the more opaque it will be. What you really want for this is paint that is fairly transparent. Paint lacking white pigment will be more transparent. Okay? All right. 
So darker blues, darker greens. They will actually read brighter than the other ones would because they will pick up the white underneath. So now we're going to significantly thin this. Okay, I go one to one with my paint and my thinner. And then I'm just going to backfill it up so you can see how thin it is in there. You can see kind of how thin that is. We'll show you over here before we do it on the miniature. This is my little test piece of paper. There's the white I was just using. See that blue? See how much of that that covers? Not a lot. Okay. And that's just it. Test on stuff like that first to make sure you have the right consistency. Don't just point at your miniature and start shooting and then be like, oh, no, that was way too thick. No, use, use this, you know, like I keep this little old notepad. It's got like a half inch of paint built up on it from airbrushing over the years. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint this guy. It's pretty much that easy. I got my very thin blue. And I'm just going to go ahead and give him a coat. Now, I'm not going to hit his hammer in this case because I'm assuming that, you know, his hammer would probably be a different color. You notice that when you're working in glazes this thin, what happens is it doesn't really move the um, the black color very much. Like the darker color still stays very dark. The lighter color stays very light. Right? The other thing is when you work this thin, you can also just rely on applying multiple layers to build up your to build your color intensity. So if I want this area to be brighter and this area to here to be darker, I can just lay in some more of that color and actually darken it down a little bit. Okay. You can pull back very lightly and just use light amounts of paint. And there you go. Right? I mean like this guy, if you look up there. Look at how bright blue he looks. Now let's swing that around. What happens underneath? Oh, look at that. Nice and dark. We get this wonderful transition on this dude. Right? Just that easy. Like, and if I wanted to, what could I do from here? Okay, well, if I want to go with some next steps, uh, you know, if I want to take it a little farther, um, there's a couple things we could do. I, if you've got, like, Infinity Miniatures or Space Marines or something where they've got, like, plates in their armor, like, lines in the plates, I can take some black paint with brush and just line out those miniatures. So, like, right here on his—let me see if you can really get in there and see that. See these little lines in his knee pad? Oop, there you go, in his knee pad. Things like that. You can run a little black paint there, make sure those are done. You could just do some edge highlighting next. Very popular in the GW method to just do some quick edge highlighting. You could call that out. That would be a fun way to go. Um, you can also do this. While you've still got your blue paint in here, right? I've still got that in there. I'm going to blow most of it out. Like darn near all of it. Then I'm going to put in just another drop of thinner and grab a couple drops of white paint. Okay. And then I'm going to backfill. Get that all nice and mixed up in there. There we go. And we can, again, we can test. There's our old blue. There's our new blue, nice and brighter. And then again, at a high angle, I can come in here and kind of rebuild in some of my highlights. If I want to just bring them back real quick, right? And now I've got some new highlights sketched right in, just that easy. Bing, bang, boom done so i could edge i can build in some highlights i could do a little black lining the world is your oyster from this point you can do as much more or little as you want but it's just that quick you can really turn out models like space marines or stormcast or stuff like that very fast and to a very high quality using this sort of a method um i love uh i love a little bit of undershading and you can play with this and build on this in lots of different ways, um, including mixing in, as I said, other colors underneath where instead of maybe black as your base or something like that, you have purples that can mix interestingly with the, you know, if you use reds, you could put a purple underneath. So that way you get some like very deep blue shadows and stuff like that. Um, 
You have lots of options. Play around with it. For models like this, you got a Stormcast army, you got you got a thousand points of space range you need to get done, guess what? You can do them real fast. But zenithal highlighting and then your appropriate base color glazing can be a great way to start any miniature. Um, I hope this is has been helpful to you. Um, as always, this is one of the big, big tricks that I use to start most of my miniatures. And I will say it's a huge time saver for me. I mean, as you can see, I, even sitting here explaining that, that was only a few minutes of work. And I could have been doing this on a lot more dudes simultaneously. So I hope you enjoyed. Give it a like if you like it. Uh, comment below and tell me what additional hobby cheatings you'd like to see in the future. If there are particular techniques you'd like me to share or explain, I am certainly happy to do so. Uh, but as always, give this a share. The nicest thing you can ever do is share the video. I always deeply appreciate that. And uh, from our little buddy knockoff Space Marine guy here, he says bye-bye. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>